And now on the show, we're going to take a look at the brand new film from director Craig Gillespie. It's called Dumb Money. And uh, this is one of those movies that when, if you watch the trailer, you'll get a very quick feeling that this is a film like The Social Network. Now, the film itself, the plot sounds quite in-depth. I'll tell you a little bit about it. The It revolves around a character called Keith Gill, played by Paul Dano, who works for a small investment firm. Now, he suddenly starts believing in buying stock in this company called GameStop, which is kind of like EB Games here in Australia. Now, Keith starts to buy up stock in this, and other in, um, friends and investors kind of laugh at him because they say it's what they call dumb money, which is a stock that's going to maybe rise very slowly or collapse. So it's like your mum and dad investors kind of get sucked in to turn $5 into $10, and then it might drop back to $5. So people laugh at him, which Keith is kind of used to because his brother Kevin, played by Pete Davidson, is a bit of a loser and has always picked on Keith anyway. But Keith is buoyed on... Um, by his wife, played by Shailene Woodley, who says that he should go with his heart and do what he believes is best. So he buys up stock in GameStop, but he also tells all of his followers on a website about this as well, and they start doing it as well, buying stock, which of course pushes up the cost of the stock. Now that starts to cause problems um, for... Some of the bigger investors in the stock market, people like Gabe Plotkin, um, played by uh, Seth Rogen, um, Vlad Tenev, played by Sebastian Stan, and it starts to show the volatility of the stock market because these guys start to get angry about what's happening because it starts to put pressure on their investment firms. So it's all very, very financial. Um, and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense when I'm just saying it like that. But basically, this shows how one man managed to annoy the entire Wall Street because he kind of exposed these little cracks and also put them under financial stress. Um, Lee, you're like me. You don't understand the stock market I'm the same as I don't. No. Um, but what did you think of Dumb Money? Because, of course, it does also explore, like, what this meant for people that put their life savings into it, like Jenny, played by America Ferreira, um, and even Keith himself. He's not a rich person. He struggles to make ends meet. So what did you think of Dumb Money, coming from the background of me of knowing <laughs> Sweet F.A. about um, the financial market? Yeah, I have to admit, I that's not my field in any way, shape or form. Maths in any way, numbers in any form – is just not something that I'm good at. So, um, yeah, so watching this, I was actually really intrigued um, to learn a bit more about how it worked. Um, and I think it really showed you more in depth about, um, yeah, the loopholes or, or how things work. Um, and it was quite... And the corruption. Yeah, the yeah. corruption. It was quite um, fast-paced, but at the same time, it was slow. It was really, really odd thing because... Um, you know, you've got a guy sitting in front of a computer watching the stock and doing little video clips out to his what become his followers, listening to his every word, hanging on to his every word and looking for his advice because they can see that his advice is valid and that what he's saying becomes true. Um, but, yeah, it's just interesting because it, of course, is based on a true story. Um you just see people who are risking all that they have to try and get ahead in life because obviously they've been dealt um, a hard life or a hard hand in life um, and they're just trying to stay afloat financially and it's really for everyday living costs and low wages. I mean, you see the storyline of a nurse who's working so hard um, but she's in debt and through no fault of her own, it's just the expense of life. And so you see them putting their trust in this man, um, Keith, and, you know, and, and it's a, you know, it's that whole almost gambling, you know, mm. scenario where they're trusting in someone they don't really know, but the 
they're starting to form a real bond with this man because he's doing video, you know, little video clips and um, or he's going live on, on the net. And so they're starting to trust him more and more. And I guess, you know, you find yourself wanting the everyday folks to beat the system and to have enough money to pay off their debts and to live a comfortable life. As you've already mentioned, there's lots of challenges along the way because there is corruption. Um, and, of course, then you see investigations and hearings coming through and you find yourself in suspense. But it's that suspense is kind of in a similar way that you would feel when you're watching um, your favourite sports team. Like you're really were hoping and wanting the little man to win um, and the people who are in most need to beat the big, you know, corporate and um, rich people um, who probably have never had to experience being poor in their life. Um, I think that... Um, Something that I would have liked to have seen that wasn't in the film um, was the reaction of the company owners of GameStop. Now, while people are buying shares into this company, we never see the reaction of the owners from, you know, their, their business is now headlines news um, because people are just buying up all the stock. And um, but we never, never see the reaction of yeah. the owners. I think that's odd that yeah. we don't see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You wonder what they think. Like that would have been such a surprise to them, but they would be in disbelief to see their little company just being popular and worth so much money in the end. Um, yeah, I just found that odd. Um, I think Shailene Woodley's character was a little underutilized too. She wasn't in it as much as I thought she would be. Yeah, yeah, it was an interesting cast because it was one of those. It's one of those all star casts. Like I thought, Paul Dano was brilliant in this. I mm. also really liked Pete Davidson playing his loser brother. It's really funny because Pete Davidson was one of those comedians that I kind of didn't really like in the past, but this year he's made so many movies that I've liked. Um, I loved him in Bodies, 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 the horror film as well, and he's really good in this, but it's one of those films where there's an all-star cast, like Vincent D'Onofrio um, plays one of the um, the kind of villains in the piece. you got America Ferrera, of course, from Superstore um, in there, um, Anthony Ramos, uh, Seth Rogen, um, it just goes on and on. Sebastian Stan, of course, from um, The Avengers, um, like it's, it's one of those ones where it's like, you've got top notch people playing every role. And I'm sure that's because Seth Rogen is one of the producers of it. Mm. Um, but because of that, some of them get small roles. The other part that I really loved about this is, um, Craig Gillespie as a director, he really has impressed me, um, from doing his like small indie drama, Lars and the Real Girl through to I, Tonya, which was the true story with Margot Robbie. Um, he did... Cruella, um, of course, as well. But it's like everything he does is so different. He did The Finest Hours, which was like a an ocean kind of rescue film. It's like you never know what you're going to get with a Craig Gillespie film. And like we said before, I put this film at the start of the year in the same boat as Blackberry, where I thought, how can you make this interesting? But like Blackberry made the start of a mobile phone company interesting. This makes this interesting now the only thing i didn't like about this film was the soundtrack it was so yeah i agree heavy with I did not like it, it was so heavy with pop music and 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 rap and hip-hop yeah. um which didn't really feel like it matched with the characters either like it wasn't no. like paul dano's character was listening to that kind of music kind of thing. So I agree. I think it just didn't feel like it matched the film. Yeah. Someone said, and I wonder if it's true, did Seth Rogen just put his favourite tracks in there? Oh, maybe. Um, but, yeah, look, I thought that part didn't um, really work. But, look, the rest of the film worked really well. It made how the screenplay, um, which is written by a team of writers, managed to make something about the financial market interesting. It was almost like a cross between the social network and Wolf of Wall Street for me. So 
um, yeah, I really, really uh, liked it. And also, I thought it was interesting, too, what happened to Seth Rogen's character. We talked a lot about Paul Dano's character, mm-hmm. but it was really interesting what happened to Seth Rogen's character as well. So uh, what are you going to give this one out of five, Lee, and why? I'm going to give this four out of five. Um I think because it captivated me in a subject that I'm not usually interested in for a start, but I thought the acting was brilliant from all the characters involved. And I just love that it's telling the story of, you know, people that are going from desperation and needing financial help to, um, you know, to have a chance at life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it four out of five as well. I think Craig Gillespie's really made what could have been a really dull topic into a really interesting film, and he's got the best out of his cast. I'm a big rap for Paul Dano. I know quite often he plays the bad guy um, in a film, so it's good to see him kind of play the hero in a film for a, for a chance. Again, I loved Pete Davidson and Seth Rogen in this as well, so uh, four out of five for me. Lee and I both give Dumb Money 4 out of 5. It is on general release in cinemas this weekend, so uh, check your local cinema guide and go along and check it out. You're on centralcoastradio.com.